Hey, it's me, MLB. Here's the top delinquent, chapter 55, and this one is titled Taking Turns Being Flustered. The papers were distributed to the rest of the class, then the teacher called for everyone's attention and the exam began. Time skip, one and a half hours later. You were the first one to finish, and you got up and walked purposefully slowly past Ida's desk, allowing your hip to brush his arm as you passed him. How you like that? You thought cheekily, knowing that feeling any part of your body against his was going to send his senses reeling. Glad to be done, you made your way to the teacher's desk and placed the paper down, and then walked out of the classroom and down to your locker. You were deep in thought as you pulled your wallet out of your bag, intending to go and get yourself a drink from the school vending machine while you waited for the rest of the class to finish. Just as you closed your locker, an arm was placed up against the metal door beside yours and you jumped with surprise. I did not finish much longer after you, Yin, Ida's stern voice said as he blocked your way. Oh, good. I like a man who finishes last. You quipped coyly, running your fingers up the front of his school uniform to his chin and then tilting it up with the tip of your index finger. I th still think I've got you beat, though. D don't count your chickens before they hatch, Yin, he replied, slightly flustered at how commanding you were being. Always remember, you are braver than you believe, stronger than you seem, and smarter than you think, Christopher Robin, you replied smartly. Don't underestimate me, Tenya. He looked down at you from where you still had his chin up in the air, a very proud, soft look filling his face, and you immediately did a 180 and averted your eyes, pulling your hand down from his chin and crossing your arms as a pout pulled at your lips. Stop looking at me like that, you mumbled, quickly turning away from him. He grabbed your arm to stop you, and you looked back at him curiously. You are indeed amazing, he said with gentleness in his voice. Stop it, he replied, flustered now. Stop being so soft. But I mean it, he said, letting your arm go and following you out of the building. Yeah, well, I can't handle your genuine compliments because I'm not used to them, and I don't want to be a blushing mess at school, he replied, poking your tongue out at him to try and ward off your flustered feelings. I will shower you with compliments after school then, when we're back at the apartment, he said brightly. I'll play WAP, you shot deviously. Please, I would prefer not to listen to such pornography. Would you prefer to see it then, you leered. No, please, I implore you. You cackled, letting out your ugly laugh. <laughs> I'm kidding, you'd literally evaporate if I showed you any type of that stuff. You stopped at the vending machine and Ida waited silently as you got a drink for yourself. You want orange juice? You asked him. I have my own money, I will buy it, he replied. No, I'll get it, you said, punching in the numbers to get him an orange juice. Y Yin, have you viewed uh, such devious materials as you mentioned earlier? He asked softly, and you looked back at him with a coy smile. A lady never tells, you replied airily, passing him his orange juice once it had rolled out of the vending machine and into the catch. Best you don't ask, Tanya. He quickly opened the straw and put his popper to his mouth and then sucked on it heavily as you both walked over to a seat nearby to sit down. This drink's yum, want to try some? You asked him, brightening up the conversation. He looked at it then nodded. Yes, I will try a little. You held it out to him and watched him take the straw tenderly between his thin yet inviting lips, sucking on it a bit before pulling back. Before he could say a word, you leaned forwards and kissed him, smack on the lips, making him recoil with surprise. Sorry, I just wanted to kiss you. You replied before sucking calmly on your straw again, acting like nothing had happened. Ida blushed again, surprised by the sudden display of affection. Just then the bell went and you looked up. Ugh, looks like it's time to go back, you sighed in a dead voice as you got up and casually strolled towards the doors, making Ida scramble to keep up. You are an enigma, Yin, he said in an amused voice as he caught up beside you. You shrugged as you sucked the last of your drink before dropping it into the bin as you strolled past. Want something to eat? I'm starving, you said as you opened your apartment door later that afternoon and entered with Ida behind you. Yin, I feel like you have some kind of condition that revolves around food. Yeah, it's called staying alive, you replied sarcastically. And if you want to live, you need to eat now. Do you want something or not? You pulled the fridge door open and doubled over into it, bobbing your head up and down to see between the shelves. I would like to use your bathroom amenities, if possible, Ida asked instead. Yeah, sure, go for it, you replied dismissively, still solely focused on finding food. Do you have a spare towel that I may use? He asked a little shyly. You looked up at him with a mildly perturbed expression. 
Oh, bathroom amenities. For a second I thought you were meaning just using the toilet and I was like, why the hell would you need a towel? You chuckled, straightening up as you turned from the fridge and let the door close. Let me get you one. You headed off down the hall and Ida followed sheepishly behind, still a little embarrassed about even having to ask for a towel in the first place. There you go, he said brightly, pulling a fluffy green bath-sized sheet towel from the cupboard and handing it to him. Many thanks, he said softly, taking it from your hand and walking to the bathroom. Odd, you thought as you watched him go, then shrugged and walked back to the kitchen to continue to search for food. You almost forgot about Ida as you moved from the fridge to the cupboard and got your snacks together, then sat down on the towel-covered lounge to chill while watching TV. A few minutes later, Ida appeared, very hesitantly, in the periphery of your vision, and you did a double take as he stood there with just the towel high around his chest, covering his torso as much as possible. Yo! You shrieked, spilling the bowl of chips on your lap. My apologies, he stammered. In my haste to freshen up, I forgot that I did not bring spare clothes. And there is the end of chapter 55. Stay tuned for chapter 56 coming tomorrow.